we want to solve the initial value problem x double prime plus x equals sine t with initial conditions x of zero equals zero and x prime of zero equals zero using convolution. To begin, we take the Laplace transform of both sides of the equation. On the left, the Laplace transform of x double prime is equal to s squared times big X of s minus s times x of zero minus x prime of zero. And then we have plus the Laplace transform of x, which gives us plus big X of s. Equals on the right, the Laplace transform of sine t is equal to one divided by the quantity s squared plus one. And now we perform substitution using the initial conditions. Since x of zero equals zero and x prime of zero equals zero, the left side simplifies to s squared times big X of s plus big X of s equals one divided by the quantity s squared plus one. And now we need to solve the equation for big X of s. To do this, we factor big X of s from the left, which gives us big X of s times the quantity s squared plus one equals one divided by the quantity s squared plus one. And now to solve for big X of s, we multiply both sides of the equation by one divided by the quantity s squared plus one, which gives us big X of s equals one divided by the product of s squared plus one and s squared plus one. Of course, we could also write this as the square of s squared plus one, but we'll go ahead and leave it in this form. And now to determine x of t, we take the inverse Laplace transform of both sides of the equation. Notice on the left, the inverse Laplace transform of big X of s is equal to x of t. And we can write the right side as the inverse Laplace transform of one divided by the quantity s squared plus one times one divided by the quantity s squared plus one. We need the right side to be in this form to apply the property that the inverse Laplace transform of big F of s times big G of s equals the convolution of f of t and g of t, where f of t is the inverse Laplace transform of big F of s, and g of t is the inverse Laplace transform of big G of s. Notice in our case, the inverse Laplace transform of one divided by the quantity s squared plus one is equal to sine t, and therefore for the formula, both f of t and g of t equal sine t. And again, since the left side is equal to x of t, we have x of t equals the convolution of f of t and g of t. Let's find this convolution on the next slide. Applying the definition of the convolution of f of t and g of t, shown below, where both f of t and g of t are equal to sine t, we have x of t equals the integral from zero to t of sine tau times sine of the quantity t minus tau d tau. From here, we want to apply the trig identity shown here on the right, where sine x times sine y is equal to one half times the difference of cosine of the quantity y minus x and cosine of the quantity y plus x. Notice in our case, x is equal to tau and y is equal to t minus tau. Applying the identity to the integrand function, we have one half times the difference of cosine of the quantity t minus two tau and cosine t. Distributing the one half, we can write the integrand function as one half cosine of the quantity t minus two tau minus one half cosine t. And now we need to find the antiderivative to integrate one half times cosine of the quantity t minus two tau with respect to tau, we need to perform u substitution, where u is equal to t minus two tau, and therefore du is equal to negative two d tau, which indicates negative one half to u equals d tau. This means when integrating, we have an extra factor of negative one half. The antiderivative of one half cosine of the quantity t minus two tau is equal to negative one fourth sine of the quantity t minus two tau. When we integrate one half cosine t with respect to tau, we treat one half cosine t as a constant, which gives us minus one half tau cosine t. And now we need to determine big F of t minus big F of zero, which is shown below. And now we need to simplify. Let's do this on the next slide. Notice the first term in big F of t is equal to negative one fourth sine at negative t. Using the identity sine at negative x equals negative sine x, we can simplify negative one fourth sine negative t to one fourth sine t, and then we have minus one half t cosine t, and then minus big F of zero, which gives us minus one fourth sine t minus zero, or just minus negative one fourth sine t, giving us plus one fourth sine t. And finally, we can combine like terms. One fourth sine t plus one fourth sine t is equal to one half sine t, and therefore the final solution is x of t equals one half sine t, minus one half t cosine t. I hope you found this helpful.